Good afternoon. Um, welcome to your session. My name is Olivier Tardieu. I'm a principal research scientist at IBM Research, and today I'm joined by... Yeah, hi, I'm Yue. I'm the staff research scientist at IBM Research. And this afternoon, we're going to talk about uh, large language models and how we can try to better understand how they perform, right? These, these problems come from essentially what we've observed on our clusters, right? Like, I'm sure many of you, we've observed that GPU utilization is not as good as we'd like it to be, right? And when we look at the reasons for that, there's a number of reasons. One is, you know, how do you get your CUDA kernel to perform as, as well as we would like? But the other one is simply that people don't quite know how to share GPUs, right? They know how to share GPUs maybe in time. Uh, this is not good. Maybe in time because, you know, I run for five minutes, you run for five minutes, and so on. But when they have long-running workloads, and these workloads don't quite require an entire GPU, we don't really have the mechanisms and the mental model yet to do this sharing. So um, there are really two problems there. The first one is that act as of today, Kubernetes doesn't really help sharing GPUs, right? And the second one is people don't really know how much of a GPU they need for their workloads, right? Because again, we have not really started this process of trying to understand how much we need and internalize as we have for CPU and memory consumption and, and, and these kind of things. So in, in, in the platform side of things, in fact, we already had a talk on Tuesday at the Cloud AI Day where we described how we're trying to make it easier on Kubernetes to share GPUs. So I'm, I'm not really going to touch too much on that today. What we're here to talk about is how do we know how much of a uh, 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 bigger piece of a GPU, how much of a fraction of a GPU we need to run a particular model, a large language model, uh, and an inference server on, on a particular GPU. So uh, to briefly to so the talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the motivation. Why, why, why is it not entirely trivial to know how the, the, the system is going, uh, a large language model is going to perform? I'll briefly touch on how we can go after GPU fractioning. I should mention here that this is the technique we're going to use in the demo, but fundamentally the, the, the modeling, the, the, the profiling approach we're discussing here has nothing to do with the particulars of how we're going to fraction GPU. You could use that with other fractioning techniques. And then you will you know, walk you through the, the details, the math, how we're going after understanding this performance. And finally, I'll bring all of this back to Kubernetes, showing you how we can take an estimator, a predictor, and you know, turn this into a tool that we use on the Kubernetes cluster to automatically uh, scale and size uh, a large language model deployments. So motivation. Um, so really fundamentally, uh, we have modeled, when we say large language models, you know, foundational models, we have all kinds of sizes. Yes, we have, model, we have models in the, uh, you know, hundreds or billions of parameters. If you were at the K-Serve talk, talk just before, they were talking about doing uh, multi-nodes uh, model serving. That's not what we're going after here. We have, but we also have relatively small models like LAMA 3.2 models that have just came out, right? And so if these models are, are small enough, uh, given the size, the, the memory, the amount of memory we get in GPUs these days, which is in tens of gigabytes, but now we have models in, in just gigabytes, uh, we should be able to squeeze and, 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 and use a, a, a single GPU to run multiple models at the same time. The challenge, of course, is you know, this is not just about memory or, or you know, memory capacity. And that's the graph that is on the right, and that's what essentially we're going to try to explain in great details today, right? But as we squeeze the model to smaller and smaller fraction of a GPU, that's what you see from the curve going from the right to the left here, we're, you know, if the model is small enough, it's going to fit. But the throughput, the amount of requests we're going to be able to serve at the same time is going to drop, right? But if we have low enough traffic and, 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 and flexible enough uh, service level objectives, we can actually run small models with fraction of GPUs and achieve the performance that we need out of them, right? And that's what we're trying to uh, make possible here and actually automate. So uh, how, do we, uh, you know, how do we go after uh, you know, uh, using fractions of GPUs? One of the possible techniques is uh, NVIDIA technique called multi-instance GPU. It's essentially a mechanism that makes it possible to take a... So, yeah, so, so this is a technique that let us uh, divide the GPU into uh, uh, up to seven slices. So up to seven 
um, uh, uh, you know, independent fractions of the GPUs that can be used independently from independent you know, servers like VLLM, for instance, without any really configuration change or, or, or changes needed at the application level. And what's nice about these techniques is that we can go all the way down to you know, seven sevens, but we can also do uh, larger slices medium slices and so on. And not only that, but we can also mix and match. So I can, in a single GPU, get small models, medium models, larger models with what they need. And we can also do this incrementally. So for instance, I can start using a piece of a GPU and then later uh, load another model using another piece of the GPU and, and, and do ex essentially what we expect from Kubernetes, which is to be able to you know, schedule things as they come and go. So uh, the way you do that in Kubernetes, just last slide on, on platform, and then we'll really switch to um, uh, uh, the, the, the meat of the, of, the, of, the, of the talk, which is how do we do uh, performance prediction. You can either use the NVIDIA GPU operator, which makes it possible. So you choose the layout, and then you use the NVIDIA GPU operator, and it's going to make this layout on all your GPUs on your node. And then you can have pods, and they can request those slices and run with the fraction of the GPU that you want. Right, the drawback with this approach is you have to know ahead of time in advance exactly the layout you want. It has to be homogeneous, at least at the node level. So with uh, our colleagues at Red Hat, we've been developing an alternative experimental uh, project that makes it possible essentially to have the exact same pod specifications where I go after asking for the same slices, but uh, I don't have to pre-partition, uh, pre I don't have to slice the pizza ahead of time or the GPU ahead of time. So that's it for me, and I'm going to try to switch the laptop while you're speaking. Um, so right now, I'm going to talk about the modeling part in our talk. Um, so we have done lots of performance profiling studies, and what today's session, we want to talk about what we learned from this profiling study and how we build up our analytic models. So based on the figure we're showing on the slides over here, the access is the latest throughput, the y-axis is the latency. And this performance numbers are measured for Lama 7 billion and Lama 13 billion models. And for those numbers, besides the dot, they are actually the uh, number of concurrent requests. Um, so as we can see from the figures that when we try to increase the concurrent request count. Um, so come back to this figure. So basically the number besides the dot is the concurrent request count. And based on those results, we can tell is when we try to increase the concurrent request count, we do see after certain points that um, the latencies uh, sharply increase, but the, the throughput stays relatively constant. So we are thinking probably there exists a need point on this performance curve that can help us to make an analytic performance model. So on the next slide, which we are showing right now, is we show the similar performance results for a different type of GPU and mix size. So for the both figure, the access is still the throughput, the y-axis is the latency. And for the figure on the left side, we show the performance numbers that we measured on A180 gigabyte GPU and also the correspond mix slices. And for the figure on the right side, is some performance numbers on A100 and also H100. So similarly, uh, for both those two figures, we do observe that when we increase the concurrent request count, with this um, latency, we do say the throughput and the latency hit this performance wall. So we believe uh, this is caused by the intersections of GPU computation and the memory bandwidth limit. So in the next few slides, we are going to talk about how we estimate throughput and latency and also how we find this need point. And before we go into the detail of the analytic model, we want to give up um, gave some back -end backgrounds about the attention layers. So this is the transformer model architectures that we um, gathered this figure from the original or attention is all your need paper. So based on what we're showing on the slides, for all the um, layers that circle the band is green rectangles near attention layers. And the transformer are built with multiple stacked attention layer. And what we're showing on the right side is actually one example of what the an ex attention layer looks like. It needs inputs from uh, like, like a query, key, and value, and also it needs to do some math, um, um, mathematics 
like uh, matrix uh, multiplications, soft, uh, soft max, and those computations are summarized on the left side. So in this computation, so we do need to load the data from the GPU memory, and also we need to store the intermediate result to the GPU memory. And because the attention layers formulates the overall transformer model's architecture. So we use the attention layer to estimate the throughput through the model's in arithmetic intensity. So the question here is what is the model's arithmetic intensity? So it is the flops per second divided by the bytes moved per second. So since um, in our example here, the attention layer stimulates the transformer architectures, so the computation cost of the, op op of the comp uh, attention layer divided by the memory cost of the attention layers is the model's intensity. So as we will know, lots of, uh, lots of models' performance are limited by the GPU memory bandwidth. So the throughput here equals the model's intensity times the, um, the GPU memory bandwidth. So on this slide, what we are showing here is we try to summarize what are the costs for loading the data and storing those results from the GPU memory and also the computations for uh, the attention layers. So um, to be more easier to understand for this uh, table, we try to summarize this, all the values on this uh, computation column. So we have this new equations for the computation costs. And then uh, we summarize the data movements cost from the first and the last columns. We have this memory movement cost equations. So based on what we discussed in the previous slides, we have a new equations for the throughput, which is the memory um, computation cost divided by the memory cost times the uh, GPU memory bandwidth. And as we all know that it's really hard to achieve the peak GPU memory bandwidth. So in real practice, we try to summarize the this portion for the computation cost into A, and then this two, two portion into, uh, of the memory cost into B and C. So we get a new equations, which is uh, what we're showing over here. It looks much, much simple, and it also can help you to fit your models on different type of uh, GPU devices. But the question here is how we find the value for A, B, and C. So in the real practice, you don't need to do the profilings um, for lots of data. You just need a very few data points to feed in this function to find the, find the corresponding value for A and B and C. Of course, the more data you feed in, the better um, at, um, estimation you can get. And so for the need points, uh, we talked about in the previous slides. So the need point of this throughput function actually correspond to the need points of this perf the performance model that we mentioned previously. The question now is how we want to leverage this need point. So for here, we are going to talk about how we estimate the latency. So for the top part, we showed the example for the LAMA 2 7 billion model on A180 gigabyte GPU. And for the access, we're showing here is the batch size, which is the concurrent request we are referring to. And the Y access is the latency. And we use the different sequence lengths over here. And as we can see from this figure, before we reach the knee point, the latency increase linearly uh, with the batch size. And also one thing to note here is for those larger batch size, it's also easier for them to reach this knee point. And this is due to the GPU memory capacity limit. And we have talked a lot about this, uh, what we have observed. And so to calculate, uh, to estimate the latency, um, we use the number of layers times the time spent on the uh, computation and also the memory. And also we can derive this function at the last, at the bottom, which is a linear function. And like what we just described, you can, we can just have a very few data points to fit in and find the correspond uh, value for A and C here. And in the next few slides, we are going to talk about some of the, our um, performance models and try to compare um, this analytical model with the real performance number that we measured on our system. So one thing to note here for the performance model, that uh, analytic model we use over here, we only use the six results from the data profiling and to fit in the model, but we do try to measure the multiple different uh, batch size for the given sequence length to see what's the differences between our measured performance number and also our estimate number. So for the figure here, that the blue line is the real performance number that we measured through VLLM, and the orange line here is the estimate number that we report 
supported through our analytic performance model. So for the top row here is the perform throughput performance, and the lower row here is the latency performance. And for each column, the performance numbers are measured for different type of mix slices. And um, the takeaway message we want to tell from this figure is the throughput matches um, our predict uh, throughput train. And also before we reach that knee point, the latency linearly increases with the batch size and also um, our estimation matches with uh, the real experiments. And for the last slice, it's the performance model results we had for the Mistral 7 billion model. And for the here, we show the results for different sequence lengths, but the one is on the 7G 40 gigabyte slice, one is on the 3G 20 gigabyte slice. And we do see some variation here, but the overall trend remains constant with our estimation. And here is the latency result for this Mistral 7 billion contest model. And similarly, um, we do see some variations, but we still, um, the tr overall trend remains constant. And this is the LIMAX 3 billion model uh, throughput results on, on this one. We measure the performance number on A100 and also H100. Um, similarly, we do observe the similar trend. And this is the performance number that we measured for the LIMAX 7 billion model, um, still on two different types of GPU, but it is for the latency. Um, still, like before we reach that knee point, the latency linearly increased the batch size and also match with our estimation. So then I'm going to pass uh, to the Olivia for the design of the Opto feed. <laughs> okay, so as I said in the introduction, how can we use this uh, you know, in the simplest possible manner in Kubernetes, right? Fundamentally, we want to have uh, developers, you know, uh, people, you know, system submitting, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating pods on the system that will contain uh, in front servers, we want them not to worry about how many GPUs they need for that, and we want to magically, at the end, uh, replace their requirements, which is you know, uh, not really precise to what we think is going to be exactly needed for this particular uh, model and this particular target load and this particular target SLA. So you know, there's a very simple way to do exactly that on Kubernetes called the webhook. This is something that's going to watch for the pod being created. Can, you, know, you have two types in webhooks in Kubernetes. I'm sure you all know these. You, know, you, can, you have validation webhooks that are just about verifying that the pod that you're submitting makes sense, doesn't have any you know, things you, you don't want there. There are mutating webhooks. That's the next level that makes it possible to change the specification of a pod or any Kubernetes kind on the fly. So again, this is what we're using here. So we have a webhook. It watches for pod being created. It's going to extract, which is what I'm going to describe in the next slides, from that pod information about the model that is being run and what we want to do with it. And based on that, it's going to call our predictor, performance predictor for the model, figure out what is the smallest possible fraction of a GPU, the MIG slice, as I was talking about earlier, that should satisfy the requirements, make the changes to the pod spec, then the pod is going to reach, uh, you know, the scheduler is going to be scheduled, is going to be running, and then in the demo, we are going to be able to see how, uh, you know, how good a prediction we have. So, the way we do this in this demo is demo where we're going to do as simple as possible. We're actually going to have pods that contain both an inference runtime, VLLM is what we use, as well as a you know, benchmarking script as, 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 a, as a load generator that will let us exercise uh, the model uh, with certain characteristics and then you know, uh, output, you know, compute metrics out of uh, this run and then again compare the theoretical expectations we had for the model with what we observe in practice, right? So from that specification, we're going to extract model characteristics, we're going to extract characteristics of the load we're expecting, and we also provide, uh, in terms of an environment variable here, uh, the expected, the, 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 the time per output token requirements that we want this deployment to satisfy, right? So, uh, you know, given that, as I said, we are going to run uh, the estimator. The estimator is essentially going to look at, at the, the curves on the right. Say you want to have, for instance, a low load. You want to have eight concurrent users or eight concurrent requests. You want 50 milliseconds per token max. So I can actually give you the smallest slice because the purple curve, actually the eight point on the purple curve is going to be below 
the red line, right? Um, if you want 16 on the other end, that's not going to be enough. You're actually going to go all the way through a 3G, 40GB slice. So a bigger chunk of my GPU to actually satisfy the need. So it's still the same model, but it's because we want to serve more loads and because we don't want our latency or, or, or per token latency to you know, creep up too much, we are going to go higher. And again, because this is a simple demo focused on uh, squeezing, focused on GPU sharing, if we cannot satisfy the requirements, we're just going to give every, the entire GPU to the, to the, to the model, right? No, that's, again, I would say demoware. A real system is going to look much more like that. Again, think k -serve, think any of your uh, serving platforms that you have. Uh, you're going to have first a separation between a description of a model and a description of an instantiation of that model targeted as a specific load. So you would have something like a, a model custom resource that describes the checkpoints that you want to load, the size of the model somehow, typically the parameter count and the precision, the bit width of the tensors. Right, and the kind of things you'd get from a model card. Then you're going to get the model deployment. That's where you're actually going to say, I'm deploying this model with the intent of serving that much load and the intent of achieving these service level objectives. And then on top of that, it's not going to be just a simple webhook, but there's going to be a deployment controller that is going to embed autofit to make this prediction. And what it's going to do is typically uh, generate a deployment, maybe a service, you know, all the, all the Kubernetes objects that you actually need to then instantiate and run your model on your system. What I want to also use these slides for is to say there's even more than that, of course, in a real system. Uh, one of the things we are not talking about here, for instance, no, so Autofit is a local ahead of time optimizer, right? So one of the things we're not talking about here is that once you've deployed the model, of course you want to monitor its performance, right? And it's actually deviating quite a bit, or the load that you're getting on the model is deviating quite a bit from what you were expecting. You want to correct things. You want to scale up or down uh, accordingly. Similarly, uh, another problem or, limit, or you know, Another thing we're not focusing on here is that Autofit is a local optimizer that says, given a model, assuming you have all the GPUs in the world, what is exactly how many GPU, you know, how much of a fraction of a GPU you need. But in practice, we live in a constrained world, and so in addition to this local optimizer, there's going to be a global optimizer that says, that's what you want, but you know, that's what I can give you. And I need to prioritize things between different models, different users, levels of services, and so on. So none of these are part of this demo, but the ultimate goal is to have autofit, as you can see in this picture, doing what we described. Um, now we are going to talk about our demo. So for actually in our demo recording, we do include the deployments for two types of uh, models. One is the OPT 1.3 billion models, and another one is the Mistral quantized models. But due to the time minimum, limit, we are only able to show the first one. And feel free to check the full recordings online, and we do have the URL and the, the QR code. Feel free to scan it. Oh, yes, this is my laptop. Sorry. Uh, it's just here. Uh, no. That's what you want. Yeah, so you can pull this. Uh, no. You can do back and forth between these two. Yeah, so what we are showing right now on the left side is actually we have prefigured the mix slices on this machines. And on the right side, what we are showing is how we deploy the autofit. And this is the part for the autofit web, web book. So now what we are showing on the left side is how we set up the performance profiling data in this JSON file. So in this JSON file, we do include the model's name, model configurations, the device name, correspond memory limit for each device, and also the correspond performance profiling data that we need for this analytic model. So we are showing here is like four type of uh, devices, and also what we're showing at the bottom is actually the Mistral models, but since due to the time limit, we are not going to show the deployment for this part. 
So right now, what we are showing is the uh, model configuration file for the OPT 1.3 billion model, and you can get those parameters actually from the Hugging Face model hub. And now what we are showing is act the actual performance profiling data we fit in for the auto fit. Like what we're showing here, actually we only include the performance round for performance result for six rounds, and this includes the throughput number and also the latency num the latency number. And what we are showing right Right now is the uh, performance numbers for 2G 10 gigabyte slice. And I forget to mention the previous one is the performance number on 1G 10 gigabyte mix slice. And I'm going to skip the mistral part. And right now, what we are showing on the right on the right side is the log from the auto feed, and that's part of going to show us how we add, what our estimation looks like and our placement decision. So right now, on the left side, we deploy the one OP, OPT 1.3 billion model uh, with for the low load request. So in this test setup, where well, the input request, the input sequence latency is 128, and also the maximum concurrent request is 15. And for the time per output token, our requirement is uh, 25. And also, we are asking for one GPU for this deployment. On the right side, that shows our performance estimations. So this is the um, throughput and the latency number for the 1G 10 gigabytes when the concurrent request is 15. And then because the latency number is smaller than 25, so it meets our requirements, and this is a small, the smallest make slice on the machine. So we deploy we choose to deploy this pod on the 1G 10 gigabyte slice. So what we are showing here is we are showing, we are showing that this pod is actually deployed on this 1G 10 gigabyte mix slice. This is showing here. And now what we are going to show is for the performance result for this run. So basically that way, what we're showing on the left side, which is the latency numbers that uh, is about 15.338, which is much lower than our performance requirements, and but it's similar to what we reported on the uh, right side. And now we are going to deploy um, OPT model with high request load. Like what we're showing here, we still use the input sequence length as 128. The maximum concurrency, concurrency is 16. Um, it's the performance number requirement is still the same, and we are asking for one GPU. On the right side of the screen, that we try to check the performance for 1G 10 gigabyte slice, 2G 10 gigabyte slice. But we find out only the 2G slice meets our performance requirements, which is 25. So we choose to place this part on the 2G 10 gigabyte mix slice. So now what we are showing is that this part is actually being placed for the, on this 2G 10 gigabyte mix slice. And what we are showing right now is the performance numbers that for this round. And for the latency number we reported for this round is 23.23. And on the right side, we do have our um, estimate uh, latency number is 21.82. And for the throughput number is 21.88. And the estimate of the throughput number is 20.94, which is actually very close to our reported performance number. And for the lax is for the mistral models, but we won't include in today's uh, uh, talk. Thank you. So going back to the to the slides and to the uh, conclusion about of the talk. So what we've essentially shown you here is that if we have a good enough understanding of how the GPU computes, of what an LLM does actually when we run it. We can combine these two things together to get to essentially a mathematical understanding of the complexity of that computation, whether it's memory consumption, memory bandwidth, compute, find what is the bottleneck in all of these, and from that derive essentially an analytical model of how this LLM will behave under different conditions. Right? What we've done here, though, is that we've kind of we are doing this model with the assumption that we can saturate the memory bandwidth of the GPU, which is not quite right. Again, a good CUDA kernel will achieve more than 80% memory bandwidth, a good attention kernel, let's say. And so, so this is not an exact mathematical model that really fits the data. 
But because we have this model, we can now actually fit that model. We can get a, a very good predictor for the performance of the model by just combining this shape that we expect with very few data points, right? Taking a step back, one thing I should have said more clearly here is our goal is to actually predict the performance of large language model without having to do a lot of benchmarking beforehand and say, you know, my prediction is just fetching a number from a table. We want to, over time, as time goes by, reduce further and further and further and further how much we have to do in terms of measurements to calibrate all of these things. So today we calibrate per model, tomorrow we want to calibrate per model family, today we calibrate per, 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 per fraction, tomorrow we want to calibrate. So this is a work in progress, but really that's the goal. The goal is to be able to predict machine learning model performance with as little data, as little input data as possible in particular because they change all the time, right? And so we don't want to be all the time running these benchmarks to predict what's going to happen. Now that we have this scale prediction that uh, is, as you've seen from the demo, pretty accurate, we can turn this into a right-sizing method, right? Which is, I take the prediction, I take the fractions, whatever the fractional technique. So this is also works, by the way, in terms of different families of GPUs. I think we've shown this a little bit by having A140 and A180 and H100 you know, benchmarks, right? So you can use this right-sizing model to scale your request for your GPU. You can scale it in terms of you know, type of GPU and, and, and size of the fraction of the GPU. What we didn't show also in the demo, uh, I think I said this, is that we can, uh, you know, this, this works not only to say, oh, you don't need a full GPU to serve your model, but that can also say, you need many replicas of that GPU to serve the traffic you want for this model because one GPU by itself will not be able to do it, right? So that's what we've shown you today, and what we've also shown you is how we can essentially bring this back inside a Kubernetes controller or webhook that is now going to help users by essentially removing the, uh, the challenge of making these decisions by themselves, right? And we're hoping to uh, open source this code uh, at least the demo code that we've shown today very, very soon. Thank you for your attention, and I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. So, I guess... It's actually working, I think, at this oh. point. If you Hello? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, are you defining the mix in advance per node? The mix in advance? No. Yes. Well, so in the demo, yes. Right? What, 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 again, I, I send you back to the talk I gave with a colleague on Tuesday. We don't have to do that. The work we've done, Deary, are all about avoiding this, this, uh, the, the need for pre-slicing your nodes, right? So, but in the particular demo you had there, what, what you showed, we were just using the regular NVIDIA GPU operator that was pre-sliced uh, uh, beforehand, yes. Okay, and so the whole idea of this is to dynamically... Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Great. This is why we need to combine this, you know, Sweet. A, a technology to improve what, uh, yes, DRA or InstaSlice with, with that stuff. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for the great talk. So I have a quick question. So uh, since there are like larger models, like 70B or 405B models that requires like more than one GPU to run, so does your methodology support like using MIG for those kind of larger models on multiple GPUs? And is this, so how, how do you like make, make decisions on those cases? Uh, yes, so right now the assumption is where the model can fit in only one GPU because for those large models, you do have to consider the communication overheads, but for here, that part is not considered. But we do believe after some tunes, this model still can be fit in to help you improve the distributed models because we are not like we say ABC is a fixed value, it's based on your profiling data. Thanks. I, I think, as, as I said at the beginning also, the, the we, we see much less challenges in practice from people and platform perspective using multiple GPUs than we see going down to you know, fractions of the GPU. So that, that's the focus of this work. But indeed, a model for you know, like sharded uh, models would be a little bit different from this one, yes. Thanks, thanks. Hi, uh, great talk, a lot of useful insights here. 
Uh, so I had one question on uh, how you were approximating for the estimation. Uh, is it relying on just the number of layers, batch size? And what are the other parameters? Yes, like what we have shown is like they, we do have a conf, uh, model configure file. In that file, we do take like the embedding size number of layers. And you can find out actually in our demo for like what other parameters we are taking into account. And this also into the GPU memory size limitation. OK. Uh, one follow-up question, like uh, you mentioned there could be some limitations. So flash attention actually reduces the memory access so it could, the ratio could potentially change. So does it work for all models, or what are the limitations you would say? So, so it's very hard to quantify universally. So you, you have a very good point, right? So what really maybe the key point here is that this is a very fast moving field, right? What we see at this point in time for the base model, even with some of these more optimized algorithms, the memory bandwidth continues to be essentially the, the dominating bottleneck. Right? But because it's the bottleneck, we're starting to see techniques, for instance, like speculation that are uh, introduced to use the you know, kind of uh, freely available you know, compute cycles to do more compute. So as these things take place, um, uh, this is going to change the model. But what we didn't show in this talk, and maybe I can briefly flash, I guess, is that, yes, we're working on the, or maybe, well, I guess that's not uh, that's also re somewhat relevant, but yes, there's a you know there's a there's a also another knee point, another inflection point, which corresponds to whether you're essentially data movement bound or compute bound. These are things we're looking at, but right now we're on the left of that of that of that picture at this point, at least. Okay, thank you. Hello, thank you for the talk. I have two questions. First one is, how are you patching the board YAML spec? on runtime, are you using like admission controller or something else? Uh, you mean what I was showing? For fitting, when you are changing the GPU allocation? Yeah, that's this, like the yes. previous, yeah, that and previous. That one. So, so, so again, well, I, I said this, right now, what I, what I show here is demoware, right? We have, in the webhook, we have a parser that recognizes these two commands and recognize the parameters for these two commands and use this to extract this information and send this as, you know, use this as parameters for the estimator, right? In, in, in a production environment, this, this looks like this. This looks like you have, we have actually have CRDs. You can think of this as a key value, essentially, a thing that describes the model. You can think of this as a key value thing that describes the, these values. It's actually simpler, right, in, uh, than the demo I've, I've shown. But there are more moving pieces, more components. So what does the controller do to change the board spec on the runtime? So, so in that case, what the controller does, in that case, this is not a controller, this is a webhook. You cannot change the pod spec once it's been created. So we intercept the creation, the pod at creation time. A uh, bit of a toy. In reality, we start with something, a precursor, right? We start with this, which is not a pod, nothing. And what we do is we actually generate the deployment from scratch with the right value in there, right? Makes sense, thank you. Uh, second question is, how does the GPU fractioning work together with dynamic resource allocation and auto-scaling component like Carpenter? So, DRA and Carpenter, I will leave that to Kevin maybe in the back. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, how it works, so, 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 um, so right now we're using the NVIDIA GPU operator kind of uh, 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 mechanism, the device plugin mechanism, which is we specify a resource with a particular name, right? So the way in Kubernetes today, if you use a GPU operator, is all of these slices have different names, they're just strings that are different, and the device plugin magically knows what they mean, right? Uh, DRA is a different system, is the future, where this is actually meaningful numbers, name, you know, like uh, you, um, so, but, but I, essentially, at the end of the day, this is the same, right? The, the YAML will be different for the array, but we're essentially going to generate the YAML that is exactly the one that corresponds to asking the DRA, uh, the DRA augmented scheduler to give you the, the size of the slice that we want, right? Yeah, thank you.